From the Tiger Cats Audio Network, this is Tiger Cats Game Day with Courtney Stephen and Mike Daly. Welcome to Tiger Cats Game Day presented by Tiffany Gay Fresh Gourmet on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. It is week 14, and after a short turnaround, the Tiger Cats are in. Ottawa for Friday night football at 7.30 p.m. kicking off at TD Place against the Red Blacks in this divisional showdown. It's me, Courtney Stephen, and my co-pilot, as always, Mike Daly. And Mike, coming off a, a short week for the Ticats, coming off a bye week for the Red Blacks, how is this game matching up and how important are these division games at this point in the season with only seven left on the schedule? Yeah, I mean, to, you know what, Court, and the the best way to flush one of those losses, I always thought, was to just get right back out there, right? Get right back out there, get into another game, kind of forget about it because I think that's what the Ty Cats want to do with that that Labor Day game, right? Is they got to forget about it, you got to move on. There was some good things, but there's definitely some learning things that need to get a little bit better. When you talk about the importance of this East Division, I mean. You know, Ottawa coming off this bye, you never really know how they're going to come back. They got some people that are healthy again, and, you know, they're hoping to get rolling. But it's close. And you start worrying about that crossover, right, with the big win that the Stamps had, right, and Sask is rolling a little bit. The Ticats got to get this thing going a little bit. And what better way to kind of put Ottawa behind them and make sure they can separate themselves a little bit in that playoff push. But, yeah, this is – uh Forget the season series and all that against Ottawa. This is important. This is important for more reasons than just Ottawa chasing them. Yeah, and the Ticats really looking to get back in that win column. But oddly enough, this season, the Ticats have more wins on the road than they do at home. Ticats this year, uh, you know, three and two on the road and one and five at home. So they're actually over 500 when they're playing out of a hotel room, which is not what you would usually expect from a team. But hey, in this situation, coming off of a one day practice week, you're you're in the best case scenario. You're on the road playing against a familiar foe. This will be their third face off for the season. And the Ticats need to bounce back in this one in a big way. Of course, Ottawa and Hamilton are competing for that third playoff spot in the East right now. Ottawa with three wins, eight losses. If they were to win this game, they would have the same record as the Ticats, but we know that the Ticats have that tiebreaker. We still wouldn't want to be in the position where a win uh, for Ottawa later in the season puts them ahead of the Ticats. So they got to lock this one in. It is worth two, so to speak, worth two games in this one. So let's take a closer look at who is going to be in the lineup for the Ticats. We've got uh, big Joel Figueroa, who was on the Pro Football Focus on a roll this past week for his performance. Uh, Revan Berg, Beard Woodmanzi, and joining the starting five up front is Jordan Murray. Now, this is a big man for those who remember. He was with the Ticats, took some time down in the NFL. He's returned now to shore up that offensive line that gave up five sacks last week. Now, You've played with this guy. What can you tell me about Jordan Murray and what we can expect him to bring to this Ticats offense? Well, first, he's going to hurt your neck looking at him because he's about <laughs> six eight, right? He is huge. When he first stepped in, I said, who is the center that we just got out of, of off a of basketball team? But he is he's athletic. What he can do is he can move. He, you know, he's he can... He's really good in those one-on-one situations with kind of their more athletic defensive ends. Um, started when he was here with the Cats, so they need some help there, right? And not all of it is on the offensive line. You know, we talk about this all the time. Taylor Powell's doing a good job protecting the ball, you know, but with that and not throwing those interceptions and making those smart decisions, he's going to hold the ball a little bit, right? So when you look at these sacks, the five from last week and, and you know, them piling up over the weeks is – um, a little bit will will be on Taylor Powell and maybe those receivers getting open as well, right? It is a team game, but to have Jordan Murray there is only going to just make it a little bit better, right? Joel Figueroa came in, stepped in, did really well, right? Jordan Murray, hopefully that he'll do the same thing and he can kind of eliminate those one-on-ones that you're going to get with the defensive lineman and give Taylor Powell maybe another half second to be able to get that ball out. 
Yeah, and Taylor Powell will be looking to improve on the performance he had last week. 296 yards, three touchdowns versus Toronto, though that was not enough to get the job done. In the first quarter last week, the Ticats did not score any points, hoping to turn that around with a quick strike tonight. And looking at that QB room, there's a little bit of a, a silver lining here because Matt Schiltz makes his return to the lineup. He will be QB three behind Kai Loxley and then behind Taylor Powell. So great to see Matt returning to action as somebody whose future we were very unsure about just a couple of weeks ago. And then rounding out that offense, Terry Godwin, who had a big game last week with uh, get finding his way to pay dirt. And then Keandre Smith, Tyreek McAllister, Tim White, and Omar Bayless, the 6'1 rookie out of Maryland, joining at the slot back position. A name that we are not seeing in the roster is Duke Williams. And early reports are that Duke has an ankle injury. So we will keep an eye on that and see how that develops. But knowing how we've been speaking about Duke being a, a big impact player, being one of the larger targets that can go up and win a 50-50 ball or win a ball that's probably 30-70 in the other direction, um, that's going to impact this this Ticats offense. It'll be interesting to see how they put together uh, this a little bit smaller receiver group and and find a way to move the ball down the field and get into end zone uh, without Duke. Now, James Butler is still in the lineup. Two of his last three games, he's gone over 100 yards rushing. Last week against Toronto, he was held to just 5.7 yards a carry on 11, so he didn't crack the century mark, um, but still pretty productive in the game. How do we get... How do we get him going again? Yeah, well, I mean, you saw it early on in the first quarter against the Argoses. Trying to get him with the ball in the flat, try to swing him out of the backfield, make an easy pass and give him a little bit of space, maybe against those DBs that are coming down trying to tackle, tackle him. But it's one of those things where I think teams are just focusing so much on James Butler, right? Other teams' defenses are focusing so much on James Butler because – Tiger Town knows better than anybody that when James Butler gets going, the Tie Cats get going and, and good things happen, right? So it's going to be another tough test for them this week because, you know, Ottawa is second in the league in, in rushing defense. So the James Butler might not be the, you know, hand it off in the backfield and let's see him get 100 yards. It might be back to those swings, right? It might be getting him out, getting a little mismatch on, on one of the linebackers, right? Because usually when that running back comes out of the backfield looking like a receiver, running a route, one of those linebackers that aren't used to covering them are going to have to step out there and, and start covering them, usually man-to-man situations. And, and James Butler's had more reps at being a, a route runner and a receiver than those linebackers usually get at trying to be a DB. So I think that's what we're going to have to look for in this game is, you know, if that run game is, is going the way that, you know, stats and numbers are saying, and, you know, who, who knows what that means, but – if they have to go to that other road and, and start throwing James Butler the ball, then expect him to get started that way because, Court, these tie cats they need to start fast, right? Because that's that's what's getting them in the holes. And, you know, you heard Coach O talk about it this week is when you're trying to climb yourself out of a hole, well, that run game kind of goes out the window a little bit more, right? Can't hand the ball off as much because you want to keep the time on your side. So they got to get started fast. And, and, you know, James Butler starting fast is, is no surprise to anybody. Yeah, James Butler had five receptions for 28 yards last game. And I think getting him to be in a spot where he can get the check down, if that's even how he gets involved in the game, I think that would be effective because that's going to do two things. One is going to give your best playmaker on the offense right now more touches. And then two, that's also going to get the ball out of Taylor Powell's hands on rhythm and on time. I think when he holds it and he extends plays for too long, sometimes you can create, other times you can create challenges for yourself because the offensive line can only hold their water for about three Mississippis, and after that, then it's every man for himself. So uh, getting getting him the check downs and just giving up that deep play for the shirt underneath, we're going to take three, four yards right here and then play for second and medium. The second and manageable, as we talked about on the last pod, um, but I think that would be a big one. So let's let's talk a little bit about the, the defense they're going up against. This is one of the toughest rushing defenses in the league. They're actually the second in the league behind Toronto, averaging uh, 77 yards allowed on the ground. Lorenzo Malden, Cleon Lang, um, Dylan Carter, these guys are, are, are monsters up front. So 
What can you expect from this Ottawa defense that's got the likes of Jovan Santos, Knox, and, and you know, uh, Cariel Brooks, Abdul Kenna, Sherrod Baltimore? What does this defense do, and um, where can we attack them and, and hope to find success? Yeah, well, Corey, we had talked a little bit about it, but not in depth, is when, you know, a defense is so focused on stopping the run, and they are so successful at stopping the run. It's because they're committing a lot of guys to that run. Right, so what you do, what you generally see is that defensive line and usually the middle linebacker and and will linebacker that are all focused on that run, while that Sam linebacker is out there and kind of that pass defense. Well, what makes Ottawa so good is they get that Sam linebacker involved a little bit more, but that leaves those defensive backs out to dry sometimes. Right in those man to man situations, not a lot of help, and that's why Ottawa is vulnerable through the air and have been all year long. Right, They're giving up a ton of yards week in, week out through the air because they're so focused on stopping that uh, that run. Right, Everyone's looking, they're biting up on any sort of play fake, any sort of play action. And I don't think it's going to be a, di- any different against the Ticats, right? Like we just said, James Butler is the focal point of this offense. So Ottawa's sitting there in their meetings coming off that bye saying, this is who we have to stop. So guess what, DBs? You're going to have to hold up and be able to cover these guys for a good amount of time because we're going to stop this run and we're going to leave it up just to win these one-on-one matchups in the back end, right? So I think that's where we're going to have to look. Hopefully Taylor Powell can have another another good game where it's a little more meaningful with these yards and these touchdowns we're getting and hopefully starting fast like we talked about. But when you look at you know the Ticats receiving core, especially losing a guy like Duke Williams, Right, the Omar Bayless is gonna have to step up, right? These guys are gonna have to step up because I think this game is gonna be one through the air, getting the ball to, you know, the likes of Tim White, uh, Terry Godwin, and, and hopefully we see Bayless kind of break out in, in in lieu of Duke Williams. Yeah, I think this this offense will have to attack Ottawa through the air. I agree completely. And now they do have veterans back there, mm-hmm. Abdul Kenna, Cariel Brooks, but when you get into a situation where you know that you can identify the coverage. You have to take advantage of it. In pro football, a lot of the battle is disguising what you are about to do so that the opposing quarterback has to take that extra Mississippi. He has to hold on to diagnose for a little bit longer. And as we spoke about, that's really one of the areas where you can get into trouble as an offense who's already giving up some sacks. When you're extending the life in the pocket, you know, walls start caving in and things get hairy. You see, you see ghosts sometimes if you're looking too, too, uh, for too long down the field. So, um, identifying the coverage before the snap would be, a very helpful way for them to simplify the offense and get the ball out quicker. Now, I'm not judging. The guy threw three touchdowns and almost 300 yards. She's doing good, but we, we're talking about getting the most important stat of them all, which is wins. And ultimately, that's going to come down to, you know, starting fast, not having negative yardage plays, and taking the small chunks when the big chunks aren't there. And I think that's going to come from, you know, seeing what these guys' tendencies are, seeing how they line up and what tips that they can give you. Um, now, Bryce Carter, I think I called him Dylan earlier. Um, he's got he's got uh, six sacks on the year. And so he's going to be somebody that's on that scouting report circled for everybody to pay attention to. And, you know, I, I think – if they do come out and get sacks early, it's going to be how does this Ticats offense respond to the adversity? Now, you might have some of those situations where you're backed up and taking a negative yardage play is completely out of the question, right? You cannot start in the shadow of your own goalpost and then move backwards. You've got to be able to move the ball out from there at least so that you can punt and flip the field position. And I think last week, that's what Toronto did a good job of is when they had to get a crunch time first down, they were able to do that, whether it was on the ground or in the air. Um, How can the Ticats, you know, even if they're going to have everybody's going to punt the ball eventually, everybody's going to have to move the ball. But how can they become more timely with what they're doing? Is there is it like focus? Um, Are there certain plays that you keep up your sleeve for crunch time? Like, if you were coaching this team, how do you uh, prepare so that in certain situations you're able to get that that need to have first down when it when it's crunch time? Well, Corey, you kind of touched on it a little bit, which you know I'll expand on. Is number one, you have to be able to help Taylor 
diagnose the defense, right? So what that is is that what you'll see is it's a lot of moving around and behind the the quarterback, but you know, a receiver, the number three receiver to the field, and then he jogs over and see who follows him. If somebody follows him, generally it's man to man, right? If somebody doesn't follow him, well, then you're seeing some sort of zone. And defenses will switch that up, make it look like somebody's following him, do a zone. But with scouting and scouting reports and, and watching, you know, Ottawa's defense, you'll be able to start picking up. And it's kind of like being at the casino, right? You're just trying to get upwards to that 80%. Like, yeah, when they do this, about 80, 85% of the time, they're going to be in man. Right now, it's an easier read for Taylor Powell. So, not even for you know the big touchdown bombs, but in our play design, every offensive play design has a man beater concept and a zone beater concept. Right? Zone beaters usually space in the field, making that zone defender have to pick. The man beaters, you know, running away from their leverage and, and getting out to the sideline, use their big wide field, get that ball out. So that's going to help Taylor Powell, but that's where the inexperience is showing up. It's not showing up in these interceptions. It's showing up in the sacks because of that extra second it's taking him to diagnose. So how do they end up getting themselves in these more manageable situations? Back to your question, Court, is he does have to try to figure that out early. And if he can't, use that check down we talk about. Get James Butler right out there. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Boom. Get that thing out of there. Whether it's James Butler, whether it's a receiver sitting right in front of him. Those easy passes where he goes, you look, you go, ooh, I, that's not what I expected it to be. Get it out. Let's get into second and manageable because that's how you put one or two first downs together and then able to punt the ball out, out of the shadow of your goalpost, how you said it. Oh, man, you make it sound so easy. I love it. That's, that's <laughs> It's not that's easy, great. but yeah. <laughs> it's great. So let's talk about the Ticats defense now. Um, common theme, not too many changes over here. Same same cast of characters. And last week, you know, we talked about they were going to have to stop the run on the way to the quarterback. And I think when you got Dustin Crum, the run is the quarterback. <laughs> yeah. So so how, how do you prepare for a quarterback is – I mean, between him, Trey Ford, all these guys in the CFL, you pretty much week in and week out are going to get somebody who can move. But uh, a guy like Dustin Crum, he's dangerous. How do you make sure that he is not the one that um, finds the end zone and really creates problems for your defense? Well, expect a lot of the same as the last game that they played Ottawa, right? They were able to limit Dustin Crum to those kind of big chunk plays, made him earn it all. And you know, you take kind of hits like that over time, and especially as a quarterback you know, on that throwing shoulder, you know, on the ribs, whatever it is, hurts a little bit more to try to throw that thing out there. So I know last last time they played Ottawa, they had Nick Cross, you know, generally a special teams guy, kind of that hybrid DB linebacker spying him quite a bit. And he can chase him down. He's as fast, he can hit, he can hit hard enough to knock a guy like Dustin Crumb down. So expect them to do a lot of the same, but now just switch up those looks in order for Ottawa not to be able to diagnose what's going on exactly what we're talking about. Now just the reverse for the Ticats defense, right? Switch up who's spying him, make sure that he stays in that pocket and has to throw it out there. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things where it's you try to contain him and not stop him because if you focus so much on stopping that quarterback running around, then you might be leaving your DBs out to dry a little bit and, and that pass game out to dry a little bit. So I expect a lot of the same. But on a short week for the Tie Cats, they don't have a ton of time to put new plays in, right? They can go back to the well and stuff like that, the old plays that they had. But don't expect much different, which is nice to see why the same cast of characters is coming back out because it just gives them that extra edge instead of trying to get somebody caught up. Yeah, and in this game, Jackson Bennett will not be playing. But there's still a, a great running back there with Williams, and he's somebody they're going to have to pay attention to. So if it's not Dustin Crum, it could be Williams coming out of the backfield. And, and they do have some other receivers that can catch the ball. Of course, uh, Braylon Addison will be seeing mm -hmm. his first action against the Ticats. Jalen Acklin, some guys that the Ticats fans are familiar with and always love playing against. So this will be a, a good test for the offense. I'm Looking forward to seeing Stavros, Katz, and Tonus stack together two good games. Last week, he dropped out of the sky and, and got an interception on a crossing, a deep crossing route that I thought was the definition of a pro play, the way he stepped yeah. in front of and snagged that one. That was an awesome one. 
Javian Elliott had a, a good interception. And I think still the Ticats DBs could have probably got one or two more even. And, you know, we're getting to the point now where we've got to nitpick a little bit because we've got to find those little inches, those nickels and dimes here or there so we can add it up together and find the difference maker for a win. And I think it, it comes from forcing Dustin Crum to be a traditional quarterback and then this defensive backfield for the Thai Cats has to capitalize. When he throws you the ball, you got to capitalize and strike. And not only strike and get the ball, but then move the field with it as well. If you if you get an interception, don't fall down. Get an interception, it becomes a punt return. And now we got to go all upfield, find somebody, block somebody, and maybe we can maybe we can score on defense and really change the tide of the game or at least change a field position and set the table for Taylor Powell in that offense. Um, I think that's how they can break this game open because you cannot sleep on this Ottawa team. Mm -mm. They, they've they played a lot of teams tough. They've beaten teams that they were not supposed to. Um, so this is going to be this is going to be a battle, man. And I'm looking forward to this one going down tonight. So um, as we're getting close to wrapping this up, tell me a little bit about who you're going to be watching or what matchup that you've got your eye on for this game. Yeah, so number one, Dustin Crumb being back and, and a little bit healthier off that bye week because he was getting pretty beat up with all the runs he was doing. But his go-tos, and, and we talked about this last time they played and nothing has changed. Nate Bahar was out for the last game, but his two targets are Nate Bahar and, and Hardy, right? Those two inside guys are, are his two targets. And when he's going to sit back there and be that traditional quarterback, it's going to be to throw it to these guys as quick as possible, get it out of his hands. You know, simple out routes, you see it on the on the goal line, quick hooks, right? If somebody if the defense is showing his own, he's getting that thing out there and, and they're getting a ton of targets over and over and over again. So when you talk about those inside receivers, I think Chris Edwards and, and Simone Lawrence are probably the two closest guys to be able to take those away. And that's about, you know, kind of understanding what they're trying to do. And almost court, as bad as it sounds, taking a, uh, you know, kind of a a gamble on being able to jump underneath one of those routes, right? So I know Simone, he's involved in the run a lot. But if he gets a little hint, that's going to be a pass. Let's get out there a little bit earlier and take some of those things away, right? Same thing with Chris Edwards because, of course, he said we got to nitpick a little bit. So here we go, right? That Ticats defense, man, like that last game, they were able to keep that team in, and then they let a, like an eight, nine play drive of Toronto get down there and score, right? And then when we talk about the Ticats offense, it's a team game, right? When we talk about the Ticats offense, they got to put these sustained drives together, right? We saw that in BC, and then we didn't see it in Toronto. So when you start looking, it's, it's yeah, there is going to be a focus on Taylor Powell and, and him being young and, you know, the sacks and stuff like that, but this defense is not young. Right, This defense is experienced. When you look across the board, it's been the same people over and over again. This defense can make plays. We've seen that time and time again. But it's got to be the timely plays. Right, When the game is close, when it's in that third quarter, you know what I mean? When the team has the win, you can't let them get these eight, nine play drives and then score a touchdown. Right, At some point, somebody's got to step up, make a big-time tackle in the open field. Like you said, capitalize on those opportunities. That's where you really put this together. And this this defense is what needs to pull this team together because they are the most experienced. They do have the most knowledge out there and they need to help this offense. And last game, this special team's out a little bit. Well said. And I think on top of that, another benefit or another possible benefit could be the addition of Jordan Murray. Now, I know mm -hmm. we're, we're only two weeks removed from Brandon Kemp being on the PFF on a roll himself. So for him to not be playing at all, the guy who's coming in has got to do well because he's going up against Bryce Carter, one of the better sack getters in this entire league. And that's going to be a one on one matchup that we're going to get the opportunity to see, you know, 40 or 50 times in the game, potentially, depending on how many dropbacks there are. So I want to see. I want to see how quickly Jordan Murray can pick up where he left off when he was here with the Thai Cats previously. Or um, maybe he's going to have a little bit of an adjustment to getting back into the Canadian game with that one yard off the ball and just see how he fits in and how quickly he can get up to speed. Because having a very solid O-line, we see when the Thai Cats have an O-line clicking, when they're moving people off the ball in the run game, when they're creating the pocket in the pass game, they do well. 
if they're giving up sacks, if they're not able to get JB rolling in the run game, they don't do well. And it's pretty much that simple. So I'm going to be watching that matchup. Uh, Bryce Carter, Jordan Murray, that will be interesting one. And then just who do you think could could break this game open? I mean, we've we've had guys like Tyreek McAllister who've had single plays that were just, you know, change the course of a game. We've had uh, guys like Flowers Lloyd block a punt in a game. And we've had a, a lot of singular moments that were really special this week. Who do you think could be that person that changes the tide of the game and puts the team on their back for that that moment when the light shines on them? Yeah, I'm going to go back to somebody I'd mentioned, but Chris Edwards, right? We've seen him early in the season make these big time plays, fumble recovery for a touchdown, right? Punching a ball out every once in a while, but haven't heard much from him recently, right? And when you're talking about this Ottawa offense, it's not like they're airing the ball out all the time, right? It's these long sustained drives with Dustin Crumb running, getting the ball out quick to those inside receivers. So Chris Edwards is going to have a lot of action. A ton of action, right? He's going to be involved in the run. He's going to be involved in helping stop Dustin Crumb running around and being able to jump these routes. So I'm expecting a big-time play from Chris Edwards because that's what he's made in his career, right? Big-time interceptions for a touchdown, really flip the field, score on defense, that kind of stuff. And that's what they need right now, right? The Ticats need one of these big-time splash plays from defense. So Chris Edwards is that guy and the reason they brought him over to this team so I'm really looking forward to to seeing the action he's going to get and what he does with it. Yeah, I like Chris Edwards. He reminds you of uh, the CFL's Dylan Brooks. You know, he's he he plays <laughs> yeah. with it. He plays with the edge. When you turn the film on, man, he's locking somebody down. He's doing his thing. He's contributing. So it'd be amazing to see him show up in the biggest way on this game that they really need. But I'm I'm looking to the offense for. My key contributor this week, last week, Tim White, there was one drive in particular where he was in the zone and he had a, like three or four catches in a row. He had like a, a absolute snag on the sidelines that kept the drive going. And then he eventually went down and he had a touchdown pass. He finished the game, eight receptions, 110 yards and one touchdown. And that's the Tim White that we expect to see. He's got that potential he's as fast as anybody and i think it's really about him getting touches because when he does get in the rhythm man he's got hands he's got speed he's got the routes it's very difficult package to contain so if he can get the ball early and often i think that bodes well for this tiecast team and that's exactly what we will be looking for at td place tonight because man Tie Cats are going to play against this division team in a very important, crucial game tonight at 730. And if you're not in Ottawa, then you know the best place to catch the game is on the Tie Cats audio network at listen.tiecast.ca. So tune in, catch RJ and Luke. They always got the call. And one hour before kickoff, you know, Bubba and Andy got you on the pregame. So if you listen to us this long, thank you. Subscribe. Make sure you tune in every single week because we keep doing this. If you're listening, watch us on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, listen on Spotify or Apple in your car because you can get us everywhere that podcasts are available. So for Mike Daly, my name is Courtney Steven, and this has been Tiger Cast Game Day presented by Tiffany Gate Fresh Gourmet. Until next week, hope you have a happy game day. Peace. It's game day and you're ready. So are we. Let us know your thoughts. Email us at game day at tiecats.ca. Courtney Steven and Mike Daly are here every game day with their insights into today's game. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.